Thank you. Can everyone hear what I'm saying? No one say no. Sorry, I have to sit down because I'm going to talk for an hour or so, so it would be too difficult to stand up. First, I'd like to thank you for, for the invitation to come here to Brussels and to give a talk on urban space and development here at the Bussar. It's a great pleasure for me. At the moment, at the Danish Architectural Center in Copenhagen, shows an exhibition on landscape architecture. It's called Man-Made Environment. And through projects from the Nordic countries, the exhibition shows that landscape architecture today is about much more than aesthetics and beautification. The exhibition clarify, when the profession are used strategic, that it can, be, that it can contribute with sustainable solutions to the urban development. And through that, it improved both living conditions for people in the city and healthiness for living in the city. And SLA office participated with two projects at that exhibition. First, a short video presentation as part of the strategy we work with at SLA called Process Urbanism and the new urban space, the City Dune in Copenhagen. And this evening I will talk on process urbanism exemplified with two projects, the city dune and the temporary use of a former industrial area. And I hope this will give some insight in how we think and how we work with urban development, urban space and strategies. This is the city dune. <clears throat> the project is an artificial nature within the city of Copenhagen. It is sustainable by creating local microclimates that is a much higher value for dwelling than the climate provided by the traffic load surroundings. It creates a poetic and healthy environment by reusing rainwater from both recreational and functional use. And it improves the branding value of the client, the Swedish SEB pension, with more than five times compared to conventional branding investment, so says the CEO, CEO for SEB pension. They simply get more customers after the project have been presented, which means, in other words, soft values are hard currency. The artificial dune is established on top of a construction with two layers of parking. It is a surface, like the surface of the dune, known from many coast areas folded to an urban space as a product of the thinking of seeing the city as an artificial ecosystem. The overall reflection behind this way of seeing the city is what we call process urbanism. It's a method that shows how to design new urbanity, urbanity based on processes in nature. It gives directions to the design of city and urban space without category distinguish between nature and culture. The city dune is such an urban space. Process urbanism is a method for urban planning that makes the, si the sites or whole cities self-regulating and procedural like the circulation in biological systems. This is the former industrial area. The urban planning strategy for a former industrial site at the harbor at Fredericia in Jutland, also in Denmark, is a proposal for how nature can work as the starting point for the organizational principle in the new urban district, which is going to be developed at this site. Process urbanism creates complex networks out of possible and unexpected connections between components that not necessarily are related, such as gas containers, the danger of explosion, preserved shorebirds, sewers and suits, tarmac and construction networking, covering polluted ground, the cultivated growth of uh, slim nature like salty meadows. Process urbanism includes rather than excludes. Accordingly, we create results greater than the sum of the subcomponents. So what we are aiming at is to reach the goal that one plus one could be more than two, actually to be 11. And at this point, the financial work are getting interested in our work. 
when they see that two plus, one plus one is more than just two. Several uh, analyses clearly indicate a higher economical value of the real estate when the public space and the biological ordered environment provide life, public and urban life to the area. When it creates space for people to play, relax and socialize. Not as something we just talk about, but in real. So the major task for Fredericia uh, area was how can we ensure that the urban life would be present before <coughs> the urban development? And how can we start a new urbanity based on the principles of nature? We suggest a new kind of nature based on the interaction between a number of different types of nature, like wet and salty meadows, sandy dunes and trees, and so on. Then leaving them to see what happened when left to enroll under local weather conditions and the local people's interaction with the site. Now I'll go back to the city dune. one was missing. This is the, the north part of uh, Jutland. The two circles you see here. This one here and that one here is two famous dunes. This one is called Rubia Knud, which is stable. The other one up here is called Robia Dune, which is not stable, it's moving. Um, and these are the basic uh, idea of, of this kind of nature we want to introduce to back to the, to the city, so to say. If you look in this encyclopedia, one can read that the word dune, which is in Danish mile, is related to the ancient and Nordic word mia, meaning both sand dune and new fallen snow. It's interesting that original, the word, both cover the meaning of the sand and the snow. There was obviously similarity between the two phenomena, sand and snow. Um, and they are linked not only in language, but also in perception. At the winter, new fallen snow drifting between buildings or trees looks very similar to the drifting sand dune. And in both cases, wind have an important role. A dune consists of sand, billions of tiny, grand, small grain of sand. They are all alike. They are almost the same in size, form, and color. And it's from granite, and it comes from granite from old mountains, rounded by the wind and constantly moving on top of each other. Like cement, they are connected and shape different forms depending on the direction of the wind, the air temperature and the strength of the grains. A dune is a pile of sand raised itself several meters over the surrounding land. It has a steep slope, 20 to 30 degrees, on the leeward side, and a weak slope on the wind side. In the past, the dune were typically, typically without vegetation, and they were all on migration. Opia dune is the only one left, and it is not planted in order to keep it in motion. In a similar way, these tiny little grains in concrete are connected to shape the city dune. It folds in the same way as the natural dune. It folds in one big and coherent movement because of all the, the concrete become a homogeneous, homogeneous what do you call it? homogeneously uh, shape all over the area, cover the, the city dune cover the ground like the, the real dune uh, does. It's like the pattern of a fluffy cloud or snow. The surface form have no reputation. It is all over unique. Moving around, you will not find the same spot twice. Even with a surface of 7,300 square meter, it is a composition composition of spaces that slide in and out of each other and can be experienced only through the walk th through the, the area. 
the city dune on the corner, yeah, this is why it's under construction, on the corner of the business area next to the inner harbor, raises seven meters and rests like a new fallen snow in between two massive buildings. The vegetation later on coming is to keep it calm. And it's a part of a project starting here, raises the seven meter up, passes, passing through this area here, con continue here, which is uh, today is a hotel complex, and with a bridge over the street here, and then continue far away down here to the south of uh, Copenhagen. We have been working on this area here for the master plan, done this project here, the city tune. We have done this also here for the hotel, and we are going to do, now we are doing the planning for, for this area here, which continu continuing on south of uh, Copenhagen. And it will raise here for seven meters, you move through the area, and over here you come up to around 10 meters. It's interesting because everything around here is flat. And usually these buildings here block the view from this neighborhood over here to, to, the, to the harbor and also a barrier for people to come down to the water. So now this is the first step in creating a new amenity value for the area that people can be connected to the water. In the near future, down here will be um, an open air swimming site in the harbor. So the whole area here is changing in, a, in a, uh, accordance to make it more public uh, livable. <clears throat> Back to the city tune. By making the surface of the concrete as large as possible and wide, we can raise the albedo effect. It means that we can keep the incoming light at the site and return the incoming heat radiation back to the air. It's similar to snow, it keeps also the brightness and, th and throw back all the heat um, uh, radiation, so the albedo effect is zero. On the black surface opposite, it keeps all the warm and lift the, the brightness to someone else. So we are using the white concrete because of, of technical uh, reasons to keep the climate, the temperature of the area down in the heat summer time. The trees are coming up will also prevent the heat to stay at the ground. It will, the trees will of course um, create shadows. And we also evaporate the area through the, the trees. The result is a cooler microclimate during the warm periods of the year and keeping the brightness of light within the space. So the white surface will make this area much more, which you can see today, also visiting the area, much more bright than the surrounding public uh, spaces and streets. And we are using, uh, we are collecting all the rainwater, both from the buildings and, one, and the water fall, falling at the site. We have huge containers for collecting rainwater under the, the streets. All the water runs down to the, to the containers and then evaporated back to the space. So these uh, water jets, which is all over the site, is running 24 hours a day when there's enough water in the tanks. So every time we have heavy rainwater, we collect all the rainwater and left nothing for the sewer. So this is the first fully sustainable urban space in Copenhagen. And it has an effect also, this uh, evaporated atmosphere at the site. It keeps both the cooler climate, more wet climate. So in summertime, you have the smell of all the, the trees and flowers around, and all the grasses um, grow very well in its uh, wet uh, condition. So it's a way of bringing, you can say, the, the quality of nature back to the city, but use it basically for technical reasons to cool the climate, to recycle the, the rainwater, to have the, the good conditions for the tree growing, for the grasses, and create a lot of interesting atmosphere and spaces. I will explain about them later. And underneath is two layers of parking cellar, so it's just a roof garden. And the surface, by folding and winding it, we make it as large as possible, so we keep the, the surface function 
optimal uh, in, in the sense of uh, creating a sustainable environment. Opia Knud, which was the other uh, June I was explaining, uh, showing you before, is interesting when it meets uh, the buildings, like here the old, uh, uh, old buildings, it moves into the building. So when you walk into the building, you will see sand, of course, everywhere. Sometimes the dunes will completely uh, cover the whole building or smaller forest, and then maybe 50 years later, when it moves away, it comes back and for, become visible. We have the same idea with the artificial dune, that it goes into the building, into the SEB pensions uh, building. So in the foyer, in the ca coffee shop, in the canteen, the public area within the, you know, the, the common area for the people working in the buildings, uh, on the ground floor, or is on the floor from zero to plus seven, um, is related to, to the outdoor space. So the outdoor space, so to say, wind into the building and become a part of of the, the basement for, for the building, just like the, the way the dune moves around. So we are using the process of, of nature, the wind, the climate, the, the air temperature, the plantation, as the basis for creating a sustainable environment with a high attraction both for the bank and for the people visiting the area. So you see, like in, in, uh, in winter time, it becomes just like sand uh, covering uh, the area. So it shifts uh, to be a more a soft uh, landscape when it's uh, with snow and a hard, soft uh, surface of concrete in the, in the summer seasons or the, the other half part of, of the year. Um, the, the elevator seven meters above the street level um, make, it, make the accessibility for pedestrians and bicycles uh, perfect. It's winding up 300 meters from, from the ground level to the top, and it's because of uh, disabled people's accessibility to, to the area. This is a requirement from the Copenhagen municipality, but we integrate it completely into the terrain so it's not visible, in fact, where it is. It is a part of the whole composition. So sort of demand become the guidelines for the new public space, combined with the, um, the natural um, um, processes. So everyone have ac accessibility to this area uh, with wheelchairs, bicycles, or whatever. And on the, the leeward, which is... Um, uh, with the, with the, the highest um, slope is to the, to the left in this picture. And in the wind side, which is facing uh, the wind side, no, this, the, the, the wind side, it, it, which is on the west, is the, from here you see the picture, is the very um, fine slope, very low slope. So this is where everyone has accessibility. From the other side, where it's more stiff, it's more complicated. So you can enter the area in many different ways, depending on what kind of sport or uh, time you have. It's today used uh, very much by skaters, which was not designed for skaters, but you go to the skaters' website, this is announced as one of Europe's best uh, skating public spaces at the moment. And there's a long road, I don't know the words, but there's a long sentence with 20 different words covering this kind of specific skating facilities you have on this site, which I find very interesting because we didn't know, any, I didn't know anything about uh, skating. But this is uh, the place where everyone uh, gathers at the moment. So where there was a European, uh, fest, uh, European uh, championship for skating, which is not far from here, last year, the first thing they did after the champion was to go to this place and real skate, as they say. It was interesting. And it doesn't create a conflict with the bank. We, th we was a bit afraid in the beginning um, if the, the bank, the pension uh, uh, people was um, disturbed by uh, the skaters. But in fact, they were most 
um, afraid of uh, graffiti. And it, the fact is that uh, skaters doesn't do uh, graffiti, they do skating. So they negotiate with uh, the pension and um, they now have the, uh, the permission to, to skate. And the, the good thing about that is it keeps the graffiti people out of the area. So it's all about negotiation. So this is a private space with public access and the owner negotiate with the users and find a balance so everyone can be here and use it and there's no damage made on the site, which is quite interesting. Of course, the skating is, is um, making problems on, on the edges because this concrete is not made for, for this heavy use of the skaters. So we, we might in a few years time change uh, all the, the edges of, of the concrete. Um, the bank don't know, uh, don't know that yet. <laughs> Here I show you some of the, the experience you have when you move through the, the space. So what we try is to make um, the, the, the physical movement through the space to give you a completely different spatial experience than looking at the site from outside. You saw the picture before from outside, it's just look at slope with trees. It seems that you overlook everything, but when you move into the area, you discover it's an enormous amount of different kind of spaces and the more you move through it, the more in, 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 um, unfold, and the more you, you get, lo so to say, get lost in, in the area. The, the noise of the traffic disappear, um, the wind are changing, and you move into many different kinds of uh, spaces. And when you, as, you extend it from, from the, the lower slope, you come to the top, the space, gradually unfold while you're walking up the 300 uh, meter long incline. And then you come to the top, you're looking back to the city, which is from here, and you see the Copenhagen scenery in a completely different view than you had seen before. Usually you, you see uh, a view from the hotel, your flat or whatever, but it's the first time you, you raise this to a level on, on seven meter or higher and looking at the city from this uh, point of view being in the public space. You can say the variety of spaces appeal to our uh, flowing intelligence, appealing to our ability to navigate through a stream of information instead of crystalli crystallized intelligence or memorizing knowledge that we already know. So the flowing intelligence is activated through the shift in terrain, the plantation, weather, and other people moving in the urban space. Two visits will never be identical. Next time, one will find another route, and the urban space will appear differently as it changes with the weather, the light, the time, the growth of a vegetation, and the visitor's own state of mind. This is fantastic with urban space and landscape. It's something that the building architecture is never able to do. The plantation is a great significance in this context. The trees and grasses are placed so that, that the design appears flat and two-dimensional when you see it from a distance, when you are from a car. It means from the position of the cars or drivers, around 80,000 cars passing this corner every day. And it's not until you stand out the car and you move through the area, it, it unfolds and becomes three-dimensional. So this is not an arrangement that mimes nature we try to, ex to create here. It is a new manner of seeing and experiencing nature, both as organization system and as a system, as a change system 
in the city. So our ambition is to create an urban view of nature through a design that clarifies the presence of nature as a process, a process that you are involved with when you're visiting the area. So simultaneously supporting acclimatization and functional conditions are what we are aiming at. We are only using downlights. So in, in uh, nighttime, you have specific area uh, in lighted. So when you're moving around again, like in daytime, you have a different experience. But now the grasses and the light are in focus. We also have um, uh, downlights from a, a higher level, but it's only to make it sure that you can go through uh, the area and orientate you. But the, the, Effect lies is on the, on the shadows and the grasses and spots. So when you're looking at it from, from outside, you, you see only a gloomed area. When you move into it, it unfolds in a new spatial experience depending on the artificial light. And we use, in this case here, we use uh, bright white light, means 4,000 Kelvin. So the color you see is the, the real color of the concrete, the people, and the grasses and trees. Now we go to Fredericia in Jutland, to this, um, um, it's an old city, it's from the 15th century. Uh, it was a meadow with scattered vegetation, and at that time it was a plant as a fortress. The rampart was insufficient and we lost many of the battles. After the new fortification was built, uh, it never, really never uh, came in, um, in action. Here you see the, the city. The fortress was built as an ideal city plan that connected the city and the fortress together, keeping the nature out of the area. So it's um, sort of also modernistic think thinking you have the city, fortification, and then everything outside is the enemy. The nature, the Swedish people, the German people, whatever was going to attack uh, the area. The town was named uh, Fredericia as the first and only one in Denmark to receive special rights by the king. It received what we call market town rights together with religious liberty, free port liberty, and status as a place for refugees. Besides the Danish farmers that was removed by force from their adjacent village to, to be the new inhabitants of the city, uh, the town was populated with Jews, Catholics, and Reformed, and criminals. They all came in asyl here. The criminals was not from Denmark, but from foreign countries in Europe could come here and stay. They become, together with the forced farmers into this area, the fundament for, for the city, and the function for these people was to maintain the fortification and provide the army with food and alike. So it meant that it was developed a completely new and multi-ethnic society. They were trading with tobacco, wheat, potatoes, a new way of cultivating land came from this area. Later on, it spread all over the country. Quarters were named after cultivation forms such as Firstly, quarter on, and other names. This is what left uh, today. Um, uh, yeah, you see the fortification here and at the, the, the bottom part. Yeah, I don't know how sharp it is, but there's an area here with a, with a line around. This is the site we are going to talk about. So the fortification uh, originally went through here, then it was demolished here, this one was kept. This area is also here today. This was all invented for industries for many years, heavy industry. Here is a gasoline and oil area deposit from Shell. So this is a heavy polluted area. The city is in, intact here. The city plan is completely intact. And uh, today it's a very, so to say, low standard um, condition 
for the people uh, here. They have um, the idea of developing this area is to to uh, kickstart a new uh, development. Um, Yeah, through the 20th century, Fredericia Harbor was dominated by these uh, heavy industries. And this is now these last five years uh, changing. In 2004, one of the harbor's most prominent industries called Kimi, Kimira um, ended operation and demolished be uh, began at that time. We see similar acts all over Europe in, in the harbor area where industries uh, are phased out and new urban development with culture and residences are phased in. Harbour sites are transformed from closed territory to be open, a new territory for civil life. The Danish foundation, Real Dania, bought this area in June 2008, um, together with uh, uh, other parts. Uh, Real Dania and the city of Fredericia had then formed a new company called Fredericia C in a joint venture to regenerate the harbor area for public and trans uh, use and transform it into a new urban district within the old city. We were commissioned uh, to start this uh, long regeneration re uh, process and this is how the, the concept of temporary use of the area was born. Um, since the summer 2009, a part of the harbor had been open to the public and had, um, had been used for everything from picnic, fishing, car exhibition, concerts, theater, and so on. And by spring last year, the Chimera site has been completely erased and construction work for a new use and expression of the site started as a temporary use. And um, August uh, last year, uh, it opened uh, for the first uh, phase. The idea behind the project is to establish a very robust framework which can subsequently be allocated different functions. A dedica de uh, dedicated part, the framework, as a generic part that ever changes uh, content. It's in Danish, but this means framework, which means a robust, robust uh, framework. How do we do with that? How did we start that? Because the area was completely, completely erased, nothing left, completely flat, not, not a single trace from the former industrial was left. Everything was tabula rasa. So we, find, we looked in the archives and find uh, different kind of historical maps. So the design of the framework is based on historical maps of the area. The method is to cut out traces from the material, able, such as plans, stories, written text, photos, and so on. So we make a huge collection of all these kind of information and start to put it together like a puzzle that will never end, so to say. So we took different paths that we found interesting from the maps and the photographs. We could decide what will be important as a space and flow. Flow of people and matter in the production of chemical products was one issue. When we trace, when we're tracing former qualities in the material, like wide open space and the more narrow ones, huge buildings and smaller and more temporary huts, we found those interesting and used for uh, proportions uh, for the site. All the buildings were temporarily stayed and rebuilt many times during the time of industry. So this idea of building up something, breaking it down and build something new was a sort of um, uh, character of, of this area. So the buildings at the industrial time was like toy where one constantly can build and add new things on remove older parts, leave it at the site as garbage, so there's never a final expression. And all the decision when it was an industrial area was to 
fulfill the best production of the products. So nothing was completed. It was a process, ever going, ever changing process. This idea we want to keep in the temporary use of the site. So this is the, <clears throat> the framework. All the black part becomes the new frame. When we put all these things together, we created this kind of pattern, which have traces uh, from all the time it had been an industrial area. Different spaces, different size, different uh, materials, um, and so on. The red parts are the buildings left uh, at the site. The, the, the building on the huge one, this one here, is where the Fredericia C company have their, their office. This is all together uh, 14 hectares. See why I'm in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So here you see the, the framework, and the, this is just after the construction of the framework. Um, I will come back later and explain why it looks so messy, but um, this, is, uh, this is the point it looks messy. Here you see the building. This is the, where the office is. Uh, and then you see so this, the surrounding city you see here. The fortification is up here, and it goes down on this side here. And there is access through the city here. It's a grid city, so, and it's on a slope. So this level up here, it's like here in Brussels, is higher than this area here. So from the top here, the street, some of the streets you have through look and can look into the side here. So the, the framework consists of various pavings, all with references to the former materials at the site and with references to the spatial components that create great opportunities for a wide range of different activities regarding health and exercise. These two words, health and exercise, is very important here because it's the policy program for the city. In this case, the woman is walking in seashells. The technical layout by the landscape contractors is quite different from normal, normal standards. Our quality experience expectations to the executed work is far from what the construction workers were used to do. The craftsmen went, a surprising, went through a surprising learning process when the mean, where the meaning of shoppy construction work got a new meaning for them. They actually videotape some of the work they have done to document to the boss that they were asked to do it in this way. They were afraid to get fired uh, when the bosses come and see the, the project they have done. So they actually have to redo the, pro uh, the construction work many times because when we came and, and had a look uh, at what they have done, it, will be too, it was too nice. It had to be very shoppy. First of all, to show that this is temporary, and secondly, to have it, um, uh, to explain that this is a temporary use, it's a temporary expression, and it's always on a state to be changed, and it's always on a state to interact with something else to become a new state. So every nice work that looks finished has to be redone until it looks unfinished. And they, they had to change some of the construction workers because they didn't want to work on the project. For instance, the, the people who was going to lay out the tarmac, the big uh, construction company using, used to make tarmac on the streets all over the country, refused to make a contract because we, we didn't accept this uh, traditional way of, of using uh, tarmac. So we have to find someone who have never tried before because we just wanted the car to run through the area and sloppy throw the, the asphalt on the ground and then just temporarily uh, surface uh, cover or 
clean the, the asphalt. So the, the edges will always break and they will be full of holes and it will crack and so on. This is the, the level we, we wanted the, the expression uh, to be. Here come some examples of uh, work we have uh, accepted. This was a heavy one for them to do. <laughs> Have to do it three times. So there was the framework, then the, the generic part, the content, the content. The activities are based on a great and engaged involvement of the citizens. Um, see, yeah. A year before we started this, uh, there was a huge uh, citizen involvement in this. Um, the Fredericia C invited all the, the inhabitants of the, of the city, the, uh, the architect schools, uh, different places of the country, and a lot of other um, uh, uh, groups of interest uh, in this area. And the Lego company uh, provided a lot of materials for, for model making, in the school classes, a lot of different age, different groups, different professions involved in this project to come up with idea for what should be the contents of, of this area. Um, and we went through, you, here you see some of the, uh, how we uh, uh, categorize uh, some of the wishes, the dreams and demands by all these uh, people's uh, ideas. And we put it, so to say, all together and then we extract uh, some of it. We have a limited amount of money, and how could we use this money to uh, make much uh, interesting activities as possible at the site? Uh, we did some Lego gardens. We scaled it up from the Lego size to the one-to-one -one size in human scale, um, and, and um, a lot of drawings from, from the kids and the architects we used as part as the generic part within the different frames. Here's some of the examples of the uh, activities. There's a Lego garden, there's a, a stage uh, for music uh, event, there's a mud uh, dip, there's an igloo, and there's a swimming uh, area. Um, and here you see the, the stage used for uh, um, pallets uh, from transportation. Later on, it's, this is how it looks today, uh, uh, in the beginning. Behind you see this red one. This is the first part of the Lego garden transformed to human scale. Later on, the trees come into the area. So this is a stage with trees. And it's removable. Some of them are fixed, so it's not dangerous. And some of them are removable. So the people can build up different uh, scenes and have music. And they actually do. Here is an evening view from the Lego garden with the lantern. It's a view to the containers with gas and oil from Shell that are still very active. These containers provide gas and oil to most of Jutland. And this is done by one of the local uh, kids from the element, uh, elementary school. Um, it's the standard materials. We used very little things, uh, very few elements are produced for this area. We try to find uh, standard elements uh, and use them uh, all over the place. The framework is also um, um, a jogging route for 1,000 meter. There was a requirement to having a jogging, jogging route through the area, the health uh, policy. And earlier we have done an investigation on what should be the best jogging route. We had interviewed many joggers to uh, county runners to, to find out what is the, what is the attraction for a route of running. It's different spatial uh, experience, different material, different sounds, uh, many edges, uh, and a lot of other things. So we tried to do um, this here, uh, uh, the jogging route, with all these kind of spatial change, um, different materials, um, some, sometimes you run up, sometimes down, and so on, within this uh, framework. 
and here come some examples of, of the jogging route. You're running here on seashells. You can run on the asphalt or the concrete. You have to look up so you don't fall. And today there's much more trees. This is from last year, these pictures. And you run through uh, grass here at the end. All the trees are removable. Since it's for temporary use, it's a problem if the tree starts to be fixed at the area. We put a construction net all over the area. This is the red net you see of some of the picture. And we create a new temporary landscape on top of that. Uh, because we don't know for how long it will, will rest. Of course, the plant and everything else will go through the construction net if it stands, if it's rest there for too long. So we make also a, a schedule for how to move the, the plants around. So it's a program for how to move the plants and where to locate them to create different kind of special, spatial uh, experiences. Here's the, some of the, the trees we are using. And here I give you the first I'm impression on the first planting. You see they're planting in, in a small hill. So it's easy to take up. So every three or five years, they have to be re removed. Can also be before, but not longer than three to five years. And we, had, we are planting many, many, many different trees, uh, as many as it was possible. To, we get all these trees from Germany, comes up in the huge containers, and we, we have been down there and select all the trees. There's a around three or 400 trees now, and uh, more will come. Um, and it's very important that they are all different species. We want to make a completely mix of, of all the trees and a sort of random mix to create this kind of new picture of, of a new landscape of a na nature which is not based on traditional aesthetics but based on the capacity of creating spatial conditions, grow conditions. It's also sort of investigation which kind of trees <coughs> will survive in this area because later on when it's developed for a city, what kind of tree will be sufficient for the city then? And not uh, some other thinking but actually we know, know exactly which kind of trees will fit uh, this location. It's a very heavy wind and it's a very salty wind. So this winter, a lot of the pine trees was uh, destroyed by this heavy salt uh, uh, wind uh, uh, conditions. So now they are recovering and next year they will go and uh, they will be uh, growing well again. We also tried to make uh, wagons, so to say. One of the the, the last uh, company to move out of the area uh, <coughs> was the, um, uh, the shipyard doing all the steel work. So we asked them to do wagons uh, for, for some of the trees. Unfortunately, they become so heavy because of the engineers' cal cal calculations. So they will probably be the only one which will not have any damage during the, the wind. And they will be the only trees that cannot be <laughs> removed. Here you see some of them. They also have to put up signs because cars shouldn't drive into them. Here are some of the other activities. Uh, there's a picnic area, different furniture, barbecue, shell containers, and sand, red plastic, and so on. Uh, see up. Yeah, here you see one of the picnic area. There's a, an island or lake of asphalt collecting rainwater so kids can play. Um, there's a picnic set here, the, the barbecue, and here's a furniture here we can sit. And here you see the rest, the red uh, plastic, and then there's a dune. And you have a wonderful view to the, to the oil. This is another angle of this area. Here's a small uh, village with different kind of religion. This is not something we did. It's a group of people in the Fredericia. One third scale. 
we put off this uh, tower so you can walk up, have a look. There was many people who wanted to, to have an overlook at the area, so we bought some of these towers and placed them in different areas. Now they're, they are, the sports guys are coming in with the, the bicycles, the MPX. So there's a lot of, of new things happen. They, they, gradually they discover this area is open and you can do exactly what you like. You can even have permission to it and if you're lucky you can also have someone helping you with the payment of uh, interacting uh, the area as long as it's temporary. Here's one of the tankers loading oil for, for the use in Jutland, together with the kids playing. Some other is out for a walk. You see a car next to the harbor, there are some people fishing. We have a strategy for, for signs, communication and inform information strategy. It's very important to explain what is going on here and what is what does it mean that this is a temporary use? What does it mean that this is a fourth stage of opening up the area before the urban development? Uh, how does it influence on the urban development? How is this linked to the, to, um, to the, the former time when it was an industrial area? Everyone living in the Fredericia had a father, a mother, and a grandfather, or a grandfather, a grandmother working on the factory area. So they, this area had a huge uh, symbolic uh, meaning for the people living in the city. So it was a sort of difficult situation to demolish everything. We tried to reintroduce some of the memories of, of this time into the area, but in a more abstract uh, way by using this kind of spaces and so on. And it's been very well received by um, the inhabitants of the city and now they are using it uh, more and more. And the information uh, strategy is to communicate what's happening in the future, uh, which areas for what use and so on. We suggested to work with an artist to make these kind of small pavilions, kiosk and so on at the site, uh, so it could be running a sort of commercial business. It's, it have it have not happened yet. This is the, the, the furniture we are using, um, this, this, uh, the picnic set, the, the tree trunk to sit at, uh, the, the concrete uh, blocks for, for fencing, a simple fence, and the barbecue. This is all standard material, very cheap and easy to, to use. And everyone more or less can move around with it, M not the concrete maybe. Um, the lighting, uh, we put up uh, lighting, this was a more hard one because uh, there's a lot of rules for how to make lighting in public space, but we managed to, to do this with, uh, with the wires, with electricity wires hanging from one lamp to the other lamp. Usually they have to be on the ground, but it looks more temporary when it's in the air, so we managed to, to use that argument to have them up there. Um, yeah, I'll show you some of the, the lighting system. This is the bullas. And here we use filter in the, in the lamp to create different kind of uh, alphabet, um, different kind of uh, letters, text, uh, from all the different kind of religions and ethnic people who have been living in the area since the 15th century. So this is one way of, so to say, uh, reintroducing the missing link of, of, the, of the past. And of course, the signs and this small kiosk pavilion can explain more about this to, to the people using the area. Putting everything together becomes a whole. The framework with the generic part that is constantly uh, changing, creating sort of new and artificial nature. And this is the result. Um, it starts uh, developing. We don't know which way it will go. Some of the grasses are more aggressive than the other grasses, and then they win. The seashells in the beginning was smelling very strongly. The whole city was smelling of, of uh, fish. 
and it makes a good topic for discussion. I mean, this is the first time the public space really had been a topic in the supermarkets to discuss. And then the, gradually the, the smell disappeared, and then something else happened. The, the rainwater was stuck on the area, and it was completely overflowed. And then what to do with the rainwater, how to get rid of it, and so on. So there's a lot of acts, a lot of talking, a lot of involvement, and a lot of new knowledge of this area, which engage uh, people, which create the basis for a sort of new nature to, to develop. These uh, three spots in the center, here, this tree one, is heavy polluted area. Um, uh, the soil is heavily polluted with chlorine connections, uh, as acinic, acinic uh, and a lot of very heavy organic solv solvents. Um, we suggested to, to see if it was possible to clean some of this. It's quite easy to clean the area for oil pollution. We physically just put the plants into the oil. So we work together with university, uh, um, the biologic, uh, what do you call, uh, yeah, biological part of the university, uh, um, horticultural part of the university, to find out which, which kind of plants can we use. So, it, so these three spots is now an investigation on how to clean up polluted area. All former industrial areas in Denmark is polluted. A lot of them will take 20 years or more to be able to, to, build an, to build on or to take the soil away, what to do with it then, uh, and so on. So it's a big topic what to do with this uh, polluted area. So here we started um, uh, an experiment to see how can we use plant, planting uh, uh, technique and method and follow it and see how it cleans uh, the ground. So this is um, a work together with the university and a lot of experts uh, are following it and there's already one or two PhD students are working on this as their topic for the PhD. Here you see some of the planting. I think these are the ones just sticked in underneath. It's oil, it's, uh, it's uh, pockets uh, with oil and then uh, I don't know much about how that works but um, it could be a lecture itself. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. And Anderson, for this nice lecture. Uh, we heard, you, you told us that you were keen on having uh, a discussion with the public and also because it's, it's a lecture that takes place in, um, in an educational framework uh, with the, the university and uh, with the high school uh, for architecture. Uh, I would like to know if there are any questions in the public decisions or clarifications? Uh, how is it possible to uh, let people on this very polluted ground? I see in Belgium there are a lot of um, rules and regulations and, and here it is possible to just for people no, dig in the ground? No, not, not on the polluted area. Um, it's fed. Can you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. It's fenced. All around here it's fenced. And we had a long discussion how it should be fenced. Uh, I know it's difficult to see on this uh, picture, but um, it is actually fenced, yeah. And uh, the authorities accepted it. I was very interested in to have this fence open, so you physically could look through it. Not, not uh, physically, no, uh, visually looking through it, but physically not moving into it. So the fence is completely open, so you can look into it and see what happened. You can see the people walking, working in at the site, but you cannot enter the area. Of course you can enter it by taking a car, removing the fence or something, by force, forcing the, the fence down and you can enter the area. 
But this is accepted by the Um, Hello. Uh, I have two questions for the temporary parks. I was wondering what uh, would happen to the trees you would remove after three or five years, because there are lots of them and they are big. Uh, and then for the first project you uh, showed us, um, um, yes, uh, I, I'm a bit uh, surprised that you uh, explained to us that the um, the way you deal with water is fully sustainable um, as you are using technique, using energy to deal with water which could actually go to the groundwater. So I was wondering if you had uh, more details about what you think about it. You use a technology to, to um, uh, have the water kept on site. The water could be kept on site, maybe all on site or, I mean, not to the sewer, with a natural technique. I, ask, uh, I answer the, the first, question, the first uh, question with the trees. They, have be, they will be removed uh, to different sites within the area. Mm -hmm. um, so, spatially, the, the site will be changed, the, the 14 uh, hectare will be changed, expression over the time. We don't know for how long it, this will stay. If the, if the develop, if development starts in five years time, maybe we will not remove the trees. Uh, if it takes 20 years, then we will be removed uh, several times. And then the trees will remain at the site when the construction begins. So the trees here, that one surviving, uh, will be part of the new green area for, for the urban development of the site. Regarding the, the rainwater at the, uh, in, in, uh, the public space in Copenhagen, uh, all the, the water usually goes to the, the sewer. And then it ends up in the harbor when the sewer is too full. Uh, so every heavy rain uh, waterfall in Copenhagen uh, overloads uh, the sewer system and you have uh, the bad water from the toilet into the harbor. So by keeping away the rainwater away from the soil, we don't have this problem. So this is what we suggested to the authorities to use uh, this kind of uh, recirculation or reusing uh, the rainwater in all the public spaces. Uh, it doesn't go to the <coughs> groundwater because the whole city is, um, is paved. <coughs> and when it's heavy rainwater, it's really a lot of water. And, and uh, if you don't store it, it's, it's uh, overflowed the uh, many places of the city. <coughs> there might be other solutions uh, to, do, to do it, but I think this so far works very well because we don't uh, interfere at all with any system of the municipality. It's all handled locally. <coughs> the, the energy we use for recycling the water could be from windmills. Windmills it doesn't have to be electricity from conventional uh, energy. Okay. Are there any other questions in the public? Is there a special demand for cool places in Copenhagen? Yes, a special demand for any cool spaces in uh, public space? Because you were talking um, about planting trees and having uh, a cool atmosphere, but don't you already have a, a cool climate? Yeah. <laughs> Up in July, we will see. Yeah. <laughs> it's more warm than here today, much more. There's a lot of open spaces, so there's a lot of areas where you can be. Uh, so you can see, we, we also know from this uh, hot islands uh, that in, in, the, in the park area, the temperature can be almost one third lower than the Area. So what we are trying to do here is say something sim something in between a park and a public space. Traditionally, park and public space are divided also the authorities. We are trying to put it together to so have the quality of the park and the public space together. And the trees is one of the 
the shows there, and then we have the cool atmosphere and like it. In the first project, we saw how you managed to break the border between outdoor space and uh, architecture, uh, specifically for the ground floors where the landscape uh, actually entered the buildings. Um, I was wondering uh, if you could explain how, uh, at the same, uh, I mean, both in terms of your relationship with the architect, but also uh, your <coughs> how your intervention was phased, uh, how early uh, you could intervene in this process of uh, uh, the design of the architecture and of the site, uh, how all of this worked together. Um, the architect we worked with here, we, it's the same, we did the whole, the whole, all master plan of the area. So, so from, from the, the beginning, uh, in the master plan, we have this idea of raising up uh, the terrain to coming up. So this was already given. And since the building is going to, to be at that slope, um, uh, this is the starting point. And it makes no sense that trying to keep the landscape out because, because it, keep, it gives so many qualities within the building for using this uh, ground level for, for service function in the building. And then you can have traditional office stacked on top uh, uh, later, um, yeah, about the, the ground. The problem is that it have a closed uh, facade, facade. So when you are outside in the space, outdoor, looking in, it's, uh, it's um, more dark uh, glass, so you don't really see what's happening inside. And when you're sitting inside, you can better look out and see people moving. So it's a nicer, a more interesting view from inside, looking out of the action. But the people in the space, like the skaters, have no idea really what's happening inside the building. We try to have it more open. Not, not necessarily physically open, but uh, visually open. So, so you, have an ex I, you have an experience that you are in a space that float into the building and out again. Climatically, you also have to shift from inside to outside. But finally, it becomes very uh, closed enclosed, so you, it's not really a, a visual connection, unfortunately. Okay, maybe we will have a last question and then uh, I'd like to invite you. Hi, um, my question concerns uh, the second project, um, the, the temporary park. You currently work as a moderator, as a referee for the temporary and uh, let's say um, almost informal use. And my question is how and at what time will you make the step of letting the project go and, and work really informal and really temporary is there, is there uh, the city that gets more involvement, the people um, in the neighborhood, or at what time you, you let your, your baby go, your, your design? We all, yeah. Um, we're discussing with the company uh, what, what should we do now? Because now the, the experiment with the plantation of the polluted area is already schemed and in process, um, the framework is done, um, the different uh, generic parts are taking place, uh, people come with different wishes, the administration of all that can be handled very well by the company, by the uh, C company, um, but we like to uh, evaluate on it, we like to find out which part works, which part doesn't work, which part Set of work for, for the people, uh, which part is interesting spatially, where do people want to, to sit and so on. So the next step will be to make an evaluation, evaluation of, of, of the area. Secondly, we will try to, to have a discussion with the inhabitants, what kind of quality they, they discover here that they'd like to, to, uh, 
to have in the new city, in the new development plan for the urbanization of the area. We will not do the, the urban plan. Uh, other architects will do the urban plan. So it's interesting to see what happened when we have the urban plan in this area and people wishes. How can we find a balance between the three of them? Because the temporary use here should be understand literary. Uh, the client is not interesting, interested to have this uh, fixed. Um, yeah, so th this is the, the condition. I, I, I could be a bit afraid that this area might be of such a high interest for the people and became such an important amenity value for them. So it would be difficult to remove it and get it. But that's not a uh, question I have. To so that uh, leaves only uh, to me the role to, to thank you once again very much, Mr. Anderson, for, for coming to Brussels and inviting our, uh, accepting our invitation to give uh, tonight's lecture. I would also like to uh, thank uh, the partner of Public, uh, Roland, Mathieu, uh, Roland uh, Piffet, uh, uh, for co-organizing this lecture tonight. Uh, last year we had a lecture of Jan Gale uh, and a very vivid discussion in Brussels uh, about, about what Jan Gale was, the lesson of Jan Gale and, and what he was uh, telling his lecture. We will for sure have another uh, kind of discussion after your lecture tonight. And, and this will begin right now with a drink in, uh, in a re reception room uh, a bit further in the Center for Fine Arts. Thank you very much. <laughs>